All right, let's talk about microservice architecture. And to understand that, we need to compare it against monolithic architecture. So monolithic architecture is one app which is responsible for everything and the functionality is tightly coupled. So imagine you have a repository that contains everything, uh, the, the database, caching, load balancing, the marketing website, the front end stuff, the API, the ORM, uh, background jobs, everything. And generally monoliths are installed on virtual machines. They don't utilize containers. Um, and the issue here is that when you have so much stuff running on a single machine, what happens when uh, your load balancer runs into a problem? It's not like you can just replace it. Uh, and so this is where microservices come into play. So the idea is you have multiple apps which are each responsible for one thing and the functionality is isolate and stateless. And so here, um, the idea is that we are using um, the cloud service provider load balancer. We're using the cloud service provider caching, the cloud service provider database, the queuing. Uh, for cloud native, you might be spinning these up in your cluster, so you might not be using cloud service provider um, uh, services as these isolate apps, but they would be an isolate on your cluster. And so the idea is that you can easily remove or add any of these components and manage them. And so that's the uh, key part about microservices. Now, the trade-off here is that when you have microservices, you end up with a lot more uh, effort uh, between communicating between all these different little apps. Whereas in a monolith, they're all in the same place. And so that is one of the key advantages, but that's just something we have to overcome when we are using microservice architecture. So there you go.